I went on a Tinder date once with a guy who lived down the street from my house. I always made sure to send my roommates the address and kept location services on for my phone, but looking back, it was still a stupid move. This guy kept going on and on about his dog and how much he wanted me to come over and meet him. After chatting for a few days, I decided to give it a shot. When I got to his place, I was blown away. It was this massive house with a boat parked right out in front of it. As soon as I arrived, he rushed out and asked me to park my car diagonally next to the boat, leaving barely any space. At the time, it didn't strike me as odd, but looking back, I think he was trying to prevent me from leaving quickly. I went inside, and the place was practically empty. There were only two futons in the whole house, but that wasn't the weirdest part. As we started talking, this guy began making all these assumptions about me, like he had already figured out my life story. He labeled me as someone with low self-esteem and a traumatic childhood. It hit a nerve, to say the least. And then I started wondering, where is his dog? He kept asking me if anyone was expecting me later that night or if anyone knew where I was. I began clutching my keys between my fingers. His questions started getting stranger and stranger. He wanted to know my blood type, where my family was from, and who I lived with. Finally, I gathered the courage to ask, where's your dog? He just smiled and continued with his questioning. At that point, I started feeling really uncomfortable. I had no idea if he wanted to harm me or to steal my kidney. I just wanted to get out of there. So I made up some excuse to leave, but he insisted on walking me to the door. He even tried to kiss me, but I rejected him. Throughout it all, he seemed really nervous, constantly checking his phone and begging me to stay just a few more minutes. I somehow managed to back out of his driveway in record time, even though I was a terrible driver back then. I was just desperate to escape the whole situation. The next day, I got a voicemail from him asking if I wanted to go on a motorcycle ride into the mountains where there would be no cell service. I never replied. Two weeks later, I saw five police cars driving down his street. I don't remember seeing him move out, but the house remained vacant for a long time afterward. I didn't have the heart to find out the details, to be honest. All I know is that I'm grateful I got out of there when I did. It was one hell of a terrifying experience. I matched with this guy on Tinder, and we went out on a couple of dates. For the first two dates, we went for coffee and took walks outside. I really liked him and thought he was friendly and good-looking. We seemed to click. On our third date, he suggested we go to his place and have some wine. I felt comfortable with him, so I thought, why not? Everything seemed fine at first. We were having a great time laughing and chatting while enjoying our wine. But then I started feeling strange, like something wasn't right. I had been drugged once before, so I recognized the effects immediately. I knew I had to be clever. I put on a cheerful front, pretending I was fine, and told him I needed to use the bathroom quickly, making it seem like nothing was wrong. Once I was in the bathroom, I locked the door and immediately called the police. I explained that I had been drugged and that they needed to come and rescue me in the locked bathroom. Shortly after making the call, I passed out. As I regained consciousness, I found myself surrounded by police officers. However, I was still heavily under the influence of the drug, so my awareness would come and go. I vaguely remember them placing a bag over my head as they carried me out of there. A few days later, I was asked to go to the police station to provide a statement about what had happened. During the process, I asked about my vague memory of the bag over my head. Shockingly, the officers confirmed that they did indeed cover my head with a bag. They explained they did it because they felt it would have been too traumatic for me to witness what my date had planned for me in his living room. Just the thought of it sends shivers down my spine. The guy ended up in jail, and to this day, I still don't know what he had intended to do to me. I was a freshman in college. I'd never had a boyfriend before or even kissed a guy. Tired of being the virgin in my friends group, I decided to put myself out there and start going on Tinder dates. I matched with this guy and we chatted for about a week before deciding to meet up. He seemed nice enough, so I thought it could be a good experience. We went out for dinner and a movie. Nothing special happened, and I actually don't even remember much from this part of the date. It was after the movie that things took a turn for the worse. It was past 11 p.m. and he was supposed to be driving me home. 
It took me a while to realize I had no idea where we were. It was pitch black and all I could see were endless farm fields on this bumpy gravel road. When I asked him where we were going, he casually said he was taking us on some back roads. I was really creeped out and just wanted to get home. I told him I was tired and asked how far we were from my place. He just said, not far, and then asked if I would mind him turning on his police scanner. At that point, I got the impression that he was just weird, but shrugged it off. Suddenly, he stopped his truck on this gravel road in the middle of nowhere and turned off his headlights. He then asked me, so, what do you want to do now? Realizing I was at the complete mercy of this guy, all I could manage was a faint plea. Just take me home, please. Panicking, I grabbed my phone out of my purse and pretended my mom was calling me. During the fake call, I made sure to mention that I was on a date and stressed the guy's name. I assured my mom that I would be home shortly. Thankfully, he drove me back home. Looking back, I'm not sure if I overreacted, but I have absolutely no regrets about escaping from that situation. I started talking to this guy on Tinder a few months ago. He seemed alright, but not really my type. Anyway, we talked for a couple of days. I didn't realize how naive I was until now, but I mentioned where I worked. That same night, I was at work when I saw a guy walk past that looked a lot like him. I hadn't met him in person, so I wasn't sure if it was him or just a coincidence. I forgot about it, and a few days later, I was at work and my phone battery was low. I told him that I'd text him later. What I didn't expect was to see him coming in 10 minutes later with an iPhone charger. Although it could have been a sweet gesture and an opportunity to finally meet him face to face, it was really strange because he claimed to live on the other side of the city where I worked. I wanted to end things right then and there, but I thought I'd return the charger after work. So when I finished my shift, I met up with him at a nearby bar gave him his charger, and quickly made up some excuse to leave. To my shock, I saw on his Instagram that he'd taken a smiling selfie earlier that day with a caption saying, I'm now a taken man, and I had only seen him twice in my life. As if that wasn't enough, for the next weeks, I kept seeing him casually walking past my workplace right when I got off work. This left me feeling uneasy for quite some time. 